Okay, so I was given the very important job of starting at the heart of all of this, which I found to be more difficult than you know I could imagine. Um, first of all, happy birthday, Dr. Witkin. It is an honor to meet you. Um, so let me just start, and I was asked to give a very, very basic sort of uh, 10,000 foot level of what we're gonna talk about in this session, and that's DNA damage and repair. So DNA is essential to all life, and it encodes the genetic information necessary for the survival of all living organisms. It must be replicated efficiently and accurately for cell survival, but this is not an easy job. DNA is constantly under attack. So there are a lot of different types of damages that DNA faces. They can be endogenous, and caused, for, uh, caused by, for instance, reactive oxygen species that are produced by metabolic reactions in the cell. It can happen uh, through an exogenous damage, such as a lot of what Dr. Witkin started with, uh, including UV damage. And these uh, types of damages must be repaired for the efficient replication and uh, passing on of this genetic information. So if the cell fails to do that, there are a lot of really bad consequences. So in people, of course, there are a number of consequences, which I didn't list here, but generally we'll say that there are um, terrible outcomes of a failure to repair, including many hereditary genetic disorders, and of course, cancer. But of course, this uh, is not specific to humans. It's true uh, for, all species across many different phyla, and this includes uh, microorganisms, which is where much of what we know started. And um, the consequences of these types of failure to repair and ultimate mutagenesis can lead to hypervirulence uh, in pathogens and uh, in bacteria antimicrobial resistance. So what we know today, as you heard, much of it was fundamentally established by Dr. Witkin. The number of discoveries she made was too long and, and too many that I didn't know exactly what to talk about. So I picked a few things that were special to me. If, if I were in her place, had such a privilege, uh, I would have been excited by uh, a few things I'm gonna mention now. So one of the things that I thought was really special was that she was the first person to observe uh, bacteria during DNA damage response. And, um, using UV damage, she was able to look at bacterial cells and see how they elongate during this uh, global DNA damage response known as SOS. And SOS is a time where cells respond to DNA damage and they don't divide, but continue to replicate their DNA, which allows them and gives them time to both increase mutations, which is a way to adapt to the environment, but also increase the chances of recombination by increasing the copy number of the chromosomes in the cell. So of course, this has been a huge field of study for many, many decades and led us to understand how cells respond to damage, at least in bacteria. What's really special to me is her discovery where she found this mutation frequency decline, which was you know, then later discovered to be um, encoded and uh, controlled by the protein MFD um, that connect the transcription to DNA repair. So DNA repair was originally really thought to be, um, and it, it, it is of course the case uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, done by a lot of different repair processes in the cell that find damages and, and just repair them. But establishing the connection that transcription, specifically RNA polymerase machinery itself, through its interaction with MFD, can lead to efficient repair of DNA uh, when there are bulky lesions that RNA polymerase faces, uh, has a huge impact because transcription is happening all over the chromosome. And so this system will actually allow cells to uh, more uh, quickly and efficiently uh, repair the DNA and the damage um, by having the system that covers the chromosome. So I believe that for me, at least, I might be a little partial <laughs> um, that, you know, this is, uh, this was a huge discovery and 
uh, this importance of this discovery. I'll talk a little bit about um, what I've been studying and I won't mention that now, but it was of course obvious when uh, we found that, you know, this system is, uh, well, not we, but you know, of course the field is conserved, transcription coupled repair is conserved and can have huge impact on human health. Um, one of the best examples of that is, you know, um, people that have a mutation in the CSP protein, which is in the, uh, the analogous functional version of MFD in humans, uh, have severe uh, genetic disorders uh, and cocaine syndrome is one of those. And so from bacteria to humans, Dr. Witkin's um, discoveries has made a huge impact and really is an exemplary um, accomplishment. And so with that, I'll just leave it there and allow our speakers to go into detail um, and get into some of these discoveries. So let me just introduce very briefly the speakers of this session. Our first speaker is Steve Ellich. Um, he shared the, the very prestigious Lasker Basic Medical Award uh, with Dr. Witkin. And his uh, talk is titled, Half of doing the right thing is avoiding the wrong thing, the DNA damage response. So I think we'll just start there. And uh, Stephen, please uh, take over and I will stop sharing my screen. <laughs> 